Right Honorable Speaker and colleagues. It is saddening, and I want to confirm that Chitezi is a parish under uh, Kasanga Tawuni Council, the constituency being Chadondo East. The affected villages of Lusanja, Chitetika, and Masori Parish existed way back. Actually, by the time the, la the landfill was commissioned or gazetted in 1996, Chitezi and Rusanja existed, and the people had their own land. It is actually the landfill that formed the people, not the people settling near the landfill. Right, Honorable Speaker and colleagues, it is saddening, just as we joined the parliament, this particular parliament. In September 2021, I petitioned the parliament and government on this floor and informed the house and government of the worsening state and the condition of the landfill. Actually, a few days after, I went to the landfill with the state minister for Kampala and the deputy exec executive director for Kampala. Water flooding from the landfill had taken, taken away people's houses. Part of our demands was for KCSA to station standby engineers on site so that they could avert the flooding, maintain the landfill, and regularly caution or alert the, the neighbors in the event of any risk. And fortunately, on Saturday, with no alert, with no proof of a standby KCSA engineer or technical person, it is reported and narrated by the witnesses. Not even as reported by the media. The witnesses are reporting that it was a blast that blew up the sand and garbage in the air with the smoke and then it came down covering people's houses. That's the narrative from the residents. They even continue to allege that for months they saw Chinese contractors installing pipes in the, in the heap of garbage because there were two heaps. There's a new heap and the old heap. Now the old heap is the one where the Chinese installed alleged pipes. And when the locals questioned, these Chinese briefed them, according to the narrative from the, village, the, the locals, that they are extracting gas. KCCA must come out open. What were the Chinese doing? We don't want to imagine and assume that it was a mere, a mere slide by the landfill. There are more likelihood that it was either an accident or an intentional mistake or negligence by either the Chinese or even KCCA. And even if it was the contractors, it was in full knowledge of KCCA. No one has mentioned that, not even in the Prime Minister's statement. Equally, when this tragedy happened, Right Honorable Speaker and colleagues, I beg for your indulgence because I'm the area MP, and, I, I, and I, I, I'm sorry for taking long, much as all of you have issues to, to add. Colleagues, when this tragedy befell, it is the locals who did the first and initial rescue. Using hands, hoes, and pangas. We provided them with equally gloves. And every person reported to have been retrieved alive was actually retrieved by the locals. Not government, not cases, not even police. When police came, they came with hundreds of servicemen, some in uniform, some ununiformed. By the time I arrived, I was there with the minister for disaster. The police themselves and, the, and, and, and some, some of their servicemen in plain clothes tried even to stop me from accessing. Of course, they had the prior knowledge that for us, we wanted to find out what were the Chinese doing. We wanted to dig out and shock 
identify the positions that had been reported by the locals. As we speak now, right honorable speaker and colleagues, part of the complaint we are having on the ground, true, there are so many agencies on the ground. And true, we have held meetings, both with the minister, the prime minister, and so many other agencies. But one of the concerns that has remained a constant is that the rescue operations are only done during the day. From Saturday, it is even saddening that people had to die. They were buried beyond the garbage. KCCA uh, 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 and this government could not proceed with the, rest, with the rescue efforts overnight. I was there at midnight. People were still crying under the garbage. Because the first, in the first rescue efforts, people were following up, those who were knocking up, and they were digging those particular spots. The police and the militants chased us away. They chased us away and I've been telling them and the minister that allow these locals to point at their houses. Maybe when you dig there, you can save some remaining lives. It has not happened. Let me speak uh, and, and colleagues. These are also human. What we had is, is a purported condolence message from Mr. Museveni alleging that these, these are encroachers, on their, uh, encroachers near the landfill. These are lawful owners with land titles. Majority are owners of Milo and some Bibanja owners. It is very saddening to find your people being branded encroachers after being killed by the state who was in charge of the landfill. Under which law do neighbors owe a duty to protect themselves against the actions of a neighbor? Reasonable speaker and colleagues, Order, order, honorable colleagues. Let the area member of parliament. Let the area member of parliament. I know emotions can run high on some of these uh, situations, but let's listen. Honorable, you can try to conclude. Right, honorable speaker and colleagues. Our our immediate prayer is for government to initiate rescue efforts day and night because these are lives we don't want to say we have lost all the hope much as our hope has reduced but at least rescue efforts can go on day and night in the on saturday the minister was there and kcc and other agencies they promised to, to start co to commence rescue efforts overnight and pray to offer light i i i had the prime minister the state minister the minister thanking kcca they brought trucks for lights when I, 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 I went to the site around midnight, the generator for the truck, the generator for the lights was not working and functional. And neither was anyone standing by to even operate the machines. We are demanding that this rescue effort must be done day and night. Equally, for a number of our people who were injured during this crisis, we heard of condolences and, and support of 200, now 1 million. In this country, where can you get medication with a lost wound? Or a, 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 a lost, a, a lost, where can you get medication at 1 million? Let's talk about treating our people fully. Equal when it comes to resettlement, it is, it is true. There are some few houses which are closer to the landfill and indeed they are at risk. But we are saying as we discuss the question of resettling them in the tent, our people who had their own houses and land won't be resettled in the tents for the rest of their lives. We want a comprehensive approach that would talk about how do you compensate these people, where are they going. They cannot be taken to stay in the tents forever. These are people, some with families. When it comes to equal those in the tents, the tragedy befell on Saturday. The whole of Saturday, they had promised with Red Cross and others to put a tent. Right above speaker and colleagues, the tent was placed in the night. Most of the victims had to seek shelter from neighbors. I was there overnight. And even when the tent was, was, was raised, the Minister for Disaster had promised that they are going to offer beddings, uh, beddings and other, other items. They were only delivered yesterday, some of them. Just yesterday, and it referred on Saturday. Where is the preparedness of government? 
Because these are, these, are, these are lives. And that's why the minister is mentioning a small number. Because people don't see hope in going in that, that would be tent. They don't see any hope because by Saturday, even when they raised the tents, there was nothing inside the tent. Even the toilet came seven hours later, the, the portable toilet. And these are lives you are putting in a tent. Where is the preparedness and the agency in rescuing and supporting these people? Reasonable speaker and, and colleagues, as I conclude, when it comes to the rescue efforts, part of the concerns of the locals is the security organs brought in their own people in plain clothes who, are, who they are working with. Those same people working with security broke the rightful residents, including myself as the area MP initially, until it had to be the intervention of the minister and the IGP. And we are telling them we are the people who know. Indeed, the prime minister was embarrassed on the ground when she inquired from one of the people working with the police and that person could not identify the, the relative he's looking for. There is, a, there is a possibility that there are some people who are pressed to own bodies not belonging to themselves and want to understand what is being done at the mortuary to ensure that the bodies are handed to rightful relatives. Because there is a likelihood and, the same, and, and, and even those who are right I interacted with one of the family who, which claimed that they were being charged to retrieve their body from the city mortuary. I brought it to the attention of the Minister for Kampala and the Prime Minister on the ground. We need a clear position and commitment that these people are going to be supported, compensated, and get their bodies for free. It is KCC responsibility and government. Government must come out open and own up this saga and make a promise to compensate and fully compensate these people. As I, as I conclude, right honorable speaker and colleagues, when I will conclude this time, we are very sad. We are very sad as people of, of Chadondo East. We are very sad as the people of Chites and Rusanja. But I want to bring to your attention, right honorable speaker and colleagues, that a number of these victims are from your areas. Actually, when I was on the ground overnight, I saw a family of 20 stranded, stranded outside. Covering themselves with, with, with covering themselves, and I, I, I got interested and inquired. They told me they had travelled from Mumbare. Another family had travelled from from Guru, and these people are saying they are, that they are, the family members are still missing, buried by the sun. Right, honourable speaker and colleagues, when the prime minister visited uh, uh, Rusanya yesterday, I brought their attention that there are, some of these families are not from here. But they, are, they have come to identify their, their, their bodies. The, the rescue exercise has delayed. How do we support them? The Prime Minister said we cannot support them. These are your people. They are there waiting for bodies of their relatives. They traveled from your areas. They don't have a house. Are you pleaded with the Prime Minister that, that allow some of these people, I did, just screen them and allow them to shelter in the tent because they are staying outside. When you see them, you may think they are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are residents of our area. No, they traveled from your own areas, you people here, you members here. When I, I brought the attention of the Prime Minister. Uh, on, 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 I know it's very emotional and all that, okay? But j just conclude, please. Use one minute to conclude that. Point. My prayer uh, and, and my request is that even these people who traveled from distant areas, must be supported. The Prime Minister rejected that proposal with the ministers, and I'm bringing it to your attention because they, they travel from your own areas. Who is going to support them? They are staying outside because the rescue effort is ongoing. They haven't received their own bodies. What should they do? And then lastly, the, the, the locals are re requested to be allowed to identify positions of their own houses, much as they were chased from the landfill. But they are saying they know the exact location of their houses. They wanted to support and assist the police we requested that at least they identify one relative, one, one, one family member at go. They take that, that member down to identify the location of their house. Because these ex excavators are going step by step. They may take months to reach. There are even some KCCA workers who are trapped in a KCCA small truck. They are still under, under the garbage. But KCCA is not speaking about it. Hey. There, there are some KCCA workers who are operating a smaller machine. They were also covered. The distance from, 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 from where the excavators have reached to where they are is still long. 
and the coverage is, is not even a quarter so far in terms of the in terms of the coverage we must make all efforts and advocacy that the rescue is speeded up and 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 we support our people it is very saddening right honorable speaker and colleagues thank you now uh Honorable Muad, uh, we join you and the rest of the community to pray for the souls of our colleagues and whatever can be done to support the rescue efforts. You know, even those who are risking their lives to carry out the rescue. You know, because as you've said, any time it can also fall on those ones. So we need to give more support to those who are carrying out the rescue and everyone who can make a contribution. Now, colleagues, uh, from the submission of Honorable Muada and the Minister for, for Shadow Minister for Kampara, I think I'll just first request for quick responses because some of the issues don't need to get lost into the major issues. No, Honorable Abdara, you know, in your area, that's where they are planning to take. Eh? So I will give you a chance. But let me first ask the Minister for KCCA uh, because. Some of the allegations made need to be cleared on the spot. Then the Minister for Disaster also comes. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, uh, the Minister of Kampala in 2018 reported to government that Chitez landfill had reached to, the capa to its capacity. There was need to decommission it at that time. Unfortunately, there was no resources allocated towards this activity. However, KCC went ahead to identify and procure land in Dondo. This such test land is used by Mokono, Kampala District, Wachiso, and some other areas because Chitez is located in, Chia, in Wachiso District. So we share the landfill. Uh, so uh, going forward, uh, uh, compensation compensation i think the prime minister talked about the compensation of that those people but this is still an emergency we cannot talk about the compensation when we still have bodies down there and we still to register all those people who are there that's why we requested you boss to come on board to assist us tell us how many people are there and how many should we and how many are we expecting there because right from saturday they were telling us a thousand people two thousand people that is a small area. We don't know how many pe people were affected. Uh, my uh, my uh, area MP has said that there was no person from KCCA to ma for maintenance. Uh, but you've said, uh, as you are ending up, that KCCA, the, the truck was also down there. So that means that statement has not been true. There was the maintenance uh, truck which was on board, which was also affected. We have not talked about it because it's still down there and when we are counting we also say our vehicle is still down there and our people are still down there the kcca people yes about the chinese who are on site the chinese who are on site uh right honorable speaker and members i've not seen any chinese on site and i cannot comment on that those are just allegations because we don't have any investor around there by uh, a Chinese. There is no Chinese there on the site. Information. I got confirmation from no, the camp. Honorable, no. information you're first allowed. You don't just grab the microphone. I know it's a sad moment for your area, but we must follow rules even in such a moment. Honorable right, Honourable Speaker, KCC submitted requests for funding starting with the Ministry of Policy Statements 2018, 2019, 2020. Since then, the requests have been submitted every financial year. In 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024, I myself came up with a uh, policy statement, but nothing was done. We were referred back as uh, unfunded priorities. The Parliament Committee recommended that an allocation of 20 billion be extended to KCCA in 2020, 2020, 2019-2020. A budget to enable authority commence on the proposed interventions and that funding gap be spread over the multiple financial years. However, 
this remained as an unfunded priority. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, I think at one time we even visited Chitezi landfill with members of parliament. And uh, we thought maybe since they have seen the problems, they are going to assist us with the budget. But up to this time, nothing has been done. So uh, our, prayer, our prayer is... No, no, Minister, you don't have prayers from who? From your own government? You're the government. We need answers. But we don't need prayers now from you. <laughs> Uh, right honorable speaker as kcca we have done a lot we have uh, talked to the investors have talked to the investors who are willing to assist us first first thing if we cannot decommission this land we have looked for investors and right now we have two investors who are willing to work with us uh, but just the tariffs were a bit high and we think if we work as parliament and cabinet, we can come up with a resolution. Others have not just been seated, we have been working on this issue. We knew this issue since 2018, and it has been ongoing. It's parliament and cabinet to start working on that issue. But others, we are also sorry for what took place on Saturday. And we are going to work hand in hand with everybody to see that at least something is done. Thank you, Honourable Minister. Investment. Thank you. Minister for Disaster Preparedness. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, first of all, I want to respond to some few issues raised. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, when we were on ground with the Member of Parliament, when I arrived and I found the Member of Parliament was being stopped, I intervened and inquired from the, the security. And they told me they didn't want the huge number of the team the Member of Parliament was moving with to access the areas which were dangerous because those people would also be at a risk. And that is why they were stopping him. And later on, when he talked to his team, they stayed back, he came on board, and we continued working together. Right Honorable Speaker, issues of disaster requires emergency response. And sometimes, when something has just happened, and that's why I did mention that I want to thank the locals in that area. There was shift to come in and respond. As on the side of government, we had to assemble a team because the Ministry of Disaster doesn't respond alone. The Ministry of Works came on board, UPDF and the rest came on, on, on board, and that's how we were able to execute what we did. Now, the tent that was temporarily provided is to provide shelter to those whose homes were affected and didn't have where to go. And we realized it would be very important that food is provided for them immediately. And Right Honorable Speaker, I delivered food that very day. The items, the non-food items that the Member of Parliament talked about could not be distributed immediately because we needed to mobilize people to come to pass information to them. And when I held a meeting with the local leaders, requested them to give directions to the people, let them know that there is a tent provided for them. They rolled on and continued mobilizing People kept on coming, and today, right now, as I speak, right now, speaker, we have 85 people in the tent, and the number still continues to increase. We are going to continue providing them food and all the necessary requirements. As government looks into the details of the compensation, how it will be done, work on the list, because these are things you can't rush into doing it, because you need a clear data of those who are affected. Right, Honorable Speaker, 100,000 being charged at the mortuary is not true. When I got this information, I got in touch with the, the officer at the Ministry of Health. And he said, if anybody is asking for money, it could be conmen. I shared the contacts of the person at the mortuary with the local leaders and told them if anybody asks for money, they should let me know. If there is anyone 
who has been asked for money. I really request that you give the details and that money will be refunded. Right, Honorable Speaker, finally, I just want to make this clear that as we speak now, the Prime Minister is chairing a meeting on how we can handle issues of compensation and the welfare of our people who are affected. And I want to conclude by asserting that government and the office of the Prime Minister is still committed to doing everything it takes that our people who are affected in Chitezi are supported amicably. I thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members. It is now very clear that waste management in Uganda is a big challenge. It is having impact on the economy, on security, health of the people, and well-being. My committee of climate change had a long meeting with the KCCA over this Kitezi landfill to the extent that we even went to the field together with them. Our advice was very clear to them that they needed to fast track the decommissioning of Kutezi landfill. It is very unfortunate that up to now it has not taken place. But I must assure you that Uganda is losing a lot of money due to waste-related issues. About a trillion shillings annually due to waste-related issues. Because what we have in Chitezi is not a landfill. What we have in Chitezi is a dumping site. I don't see any landfill in Uganda. A landfill must have full landfill engineering technology, and which we are not doing. And then amount of waste, that waste can be turned into wealth. We have methane there, which can be tapped and be used. We have so many other gases that can be tapped and be used. We even recommended that investors should be encouraged to come and tap that waste so that we can use that money to turn that waste into energy. And this is what we agreed as a country. But the speed at which these things are taking place is so slow. Then number two, there are a number of projects, including projects from the World Bank, which were implemented for waste management in Kampala by KCCA. If you do, a first, if you do tracking of those uh, projects, you are likely to see that the monies were not well spent on waste management in Kampala. And that is why today we are suffering the impact of the waste management in Kampala. This is an early warning and a learning point to us. Because this waste are already blocking our channels, causing a lot of floods and health-related issues. Another early warning which I must give as I present on this Kitezi landfill is the wetlands in Luzira and Port Bell. Should you remove that wetland and that in Luzira and Port Bell, you will see the waters of Lake Victoria coming to Kampala. All these hills, one day, you will see them in the island. Um, I really want to give this early warning the same way we gave early warning on Kitezi landfill. So, first track. <laughs> Honorable members, my prayer is that we must first track the alternative land and the alternative land must have a fully fledged landfill engineering. Although landfill is outdated, but in Africa we can still use if it is f with the, the, the engineering. And then the, the materials which we can tap from there, like methane, carbon dioxide, we can tap them and turn the waste into energy. That Kitezi landfill can generate about 6.5 megawatts of electricity. The same size of Nyagak 3. So, you see the material we are spending in Nyagak 3, and yet we can tap electricity from here, 6.5 megawatts. So, we really... And then, it brings me to the issue of corruption. There are many investors who are coming to the Ministry of Energy. They want to turn waste into energy. When they charge, like... When they, they give the cost of doing that business, some people want to... That, that figure, figure inflated... That should stop if we really want to manage this economy. I want to thank you. Thank you.
Mr. Speaker, first I sympathize with the colleagues who accept to be appointed ministers. Why do I sympathize? The minister for Kampala, when you asked her to respond, she was as crying as any other member of this parliament. We did this, we did this, we did this. <laughs> I don't know why you accept the ministers in a government like this. <clears throat> and I am saying this deliberately, Mr. Speaker, because I have seen here I have seen the Vice President and the Prime Minister after their appointment going to Guru to, to thank General Sari. You all have contributed to creating this disaster of one man taking every decision. That's why all of you here, Cabinet, you are here crying. Why don't you convene a Cabinet meeting and take a decision? You, you come to Parliament to cry. So what do you want us to do? Mr. Speaker, Chitezi, <clears throat> Chitezi was one of the villages I represented in the 9th Parliament. The solution cannot be transferring that particular problem to Mukono, as my colleague, the Honorable Abdullah Chiwanuka, has said. People who live in Chitezi, even before the death, because the waste you put there is not processed, it has attracted all the dogs in the world, <laughs> all the flies, the trucks that carry garbage from Kampala, maybe are supposed to be carrying firewood. They go dropping garbage from every point. The Honorable Chuan Kavdara says he doesn't want a garbage to be taken but they will be passing through my constituency. We will also stop you because we, we don't want to be turned into another side. Because by the time these trucks reach Tez, they have dropped 10% of the garbage <laughs> along the way. <laughs> That's why that whole area smells. And the road from Gayaza goes through, to my, const through my constituency to Mukono North. Please find another way. Maybe you can ask the president to offer his job. Because we will not allow you to use our villages uh, uh, on your way to Mukono. Mr. Speaker, I have visited National Water. They process and actually turn uh, the fist into fertilizer. I have visited two of their sites. What stops you from acquiring equipment to process this garbage that you go and post there? Because that's the all that you are doing. And Mr. Speaker, finally, the, this disaster, the one of Mwada has reported here, even when I was the MP for the whole area before it was subdivided, I came here and cried. The World Bank has early. Yeah, for us, we can only cry we are not in the government. I am only surprised that even government people cry. It's understandable. The only mother can cry. But when the Minister of Kampala joining him in crying, then you wonder who is in charge. <laughs> so the, the World Bank that uh, sponsored that uh, dump site recommended in a report written more than five years ago, please decommission. The Minister says, uh, we have also been saying the same thing. I, I don't know where we should go. So, the point I am making, finally, Mr. Speaker, <clears throat> first, I don't think it makes sense to transport garbage from Chengera, from Entebbe, from everywhere, and move in one direction. We need to start, uh, because we, we don't have a landfill, my proposal would be to spread them, to decentralize this service, 
such that people on Masaka Road can find a place there. People on uh, Mitiana Road can find space there. But otherwise, this disaster has killed people. But you don't know how many people are now diseased as a result of dropping garbage almost at every point from Kampala to Kitezi. We may not have done a research. Maybe that needs to be done also. I, 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 because I, I should have appealed to government to do something. But I don't know who I should ask there because the, they are also crying. <laughs> Maybe, Mr. Speaker, you will be the one to go to speak to the one person who runs this country on our behalf. Because, you see, the moment... He, it's not only garbage, everything, once it comes to the time of decommissioning and you don't decommission, it's a problem. Even a, the NRM itself, I think the time to decommission it came long ago. <laughs> These problems that we are seeing now are as a result of not decommissioning NRM at the right time. So we are now paying the price. This is just one illustration, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank you very much. Thank you. Now... I, I can see why Semuja and Tim have decided to decommission FDC. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, for giving me an opportunity to discuss the biggest challenge Kampala Capital City has. Right Honorable, Kampala generates 2,500 tons of garbage every day. But only 1,200, 1,200 is uh, collected by KCCA, including a consortium of contractors that were, contract that were appointed by KCCA to deal with the garbage. Chitezi was commissioned in 1996 and he was supposed to work for about 10 years. But unfortunately, we have had reports talking about decommissioning. We have had Asia's recommending decommissioning of Chitezi in vain. So this is not actually a natural disaster, but it has been induced by human. And there are very many, there are very many institutions that are to blame, including Parliament, our own Committee of Budget. For the last eight years, right, Honorable, the Committee of Presidential Affairs has recommended, I have the reports here, monies for the decommissioning of Chitezi, but the budget committee has not. And, 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 and cabinet, and the executive, and the president has not at all prioritized this uh, I, 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 for that reason I table the committee reports right on including the alternative uh, the committee report of presidential affairs of uh, financial year 2020 2022 2023 I lay These are extracts of uh, report of the committee. Procedure. Procedure. Mr. Speaker, the Shadow Minister for Kampala is sharing documents that ordinarily should be in our possession. But because of the nature of the problem we are dealing with, would it indeed be procedural right for him to tell us what is in those documents 
so that it helps uh, the debate. Thank you. Uh, but he referred to these documents as containing recommendations that funds should be provided for decommissioning. And he referred to several reports. So uh, at least we know what is in, you know, in the reports. And uh, a neighbor can inform one of us. Yes. Right, Honorable. Right, Honorable, because you told me not to read a statement. You are debating, Honorable. Yes, I'm debating. You told me not to read my statement. Right, Honorable. I want to emphasize that they have always recommended in a range of 30 to 60 billion for both decommissioning and uh, starting GTAZ, I mean Dundu. Despite the fact that uh, according to me and us, Dundu is unsustainable. Because Dundu is uh, uh, 45 kilometers away from the city center. And uh, ferrying garbage from Kampala to Dundu won't be viable and therefore we need a more sustainable approach 80 percent of the garbage that we generate in the city is biodegradable and considering that uh, uganda is an agriculture uh, country it, there is need to manufacture or convert manufacture manure from uh, this resource because the garbage is garbage when it has no further use garbage can be a very good resource and therefore that is one of the ways for that that cannot be recycled and uh, converted can be burnt and we get energy which will basically help us to have fuel right honorable When you talk about how funding has been given to KCCA, for the last, since 2011, KCC was given three, in 2011, KCC was given uh, 3.1 billion for managing uh, Chitezi. And they have never included, I mean, increased that, that money. They have only reduced. So you cannot, where fuel has increased you cannot fail to increase the budget of running jitezi which is the only facility that we have as a dump site by the way it does not qualify to be a landfill it is a dump site because it actually does not qualify therefore it's important as i conclude that uh, the people around Chitezi, because they own the land and it's within the constitution of Uganda under Article 26.1 that the people have a right to own property. Government cannot come all of a sudden and say, we are telling you go away without even a plan, a resettlement plan, a clear resettlement plan. Therefore, it's important that uh, as we discuss, let government let government make a conclusive plan to reset our people and perhaps compensate them because the money is there the money is available the money that we have been giving to 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 to, to the sugar factories the money that we have been giving to rocco the money that we have, uh, we, are, we are going to utilize for for the regional whatever regional parliaments we, we can uh, for starters we can for starters we, we can for starters utilize that money to reset our people for starters we, we can postpone the regional uh, parliaments and uh, utilize that money for basically right honorable thank you honorable barmezo thank you honorable let's give your colleagues a chance uh, uh, honorable Mero. then honorable Mapenduzi. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I condole with the families that have lost. 
and I want to thank the area MP for standing with his people. The government on the other side for the efforts that you have put in place. However, I have some questions that I would like to ask. While uh, in this house, a colleague said that parliament has not given enough attention. We gave money to KCCA to purchase the Dundu land. But I want to ask, what are our priorities in this country? Do we have to buy land before we do a feasibility study to see that what we intend to establish in that place can stand the test of time? Because now the 134 acres in Dundu is idle for all those years that have been in this house. And now we are having the Kitezi problem, which they had promised by the time they were pushing the committee to give the money, which we worked very hard to get the money to buy that land in Dundu. What are our priorities? Has the National Planning Authority failed in this regard or what? So I'm just asking, Mr. Speaker, if government could do the right thing at the right time, I think we should be very far. We have the best laws in these countries, but implementation has failed just because of one thing, corruption. Corruption. And I want to request that KCCA be held accountable. They should come and account to this house. Where they put the money they received from here. Because we can't take part of this blame to say that the house did not give money. No. We looked at it and thought it was a good idea. We visited Kitezi, we visited Dundu, where the land is. What has happened? We got their graders. What happened that they did not decommission and start using the other land? Mr. Speaker, there's a challenge. And if we're fighting corruption, we should not fight corruption haphazardly. Let's fight corruption from the root. This business of apportioning blame cannot work here. I think we need to learn how to put our priorities the right way. What is a priority is put as an unfunded priority. And what is useless is where we put in money, which doesn't benefit the local people. It is very painful because these people who have died, you don't know where they are coming from. Some of them are from our places. But even if they are not from our places, they are human beings, they are entitled to life. What were we doing to decommission this place? Mr. Speaker, I beg that KCCA be investigated and they thoroughly declare where they put money. Because we bought that land at a very high price than expected. I beg to submit. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. It is very clear to us that today it's me, tomorrow is someone else. And in my language, I can loosely translate to say that when a stick beats your co-wife, you actually are supposed to burn it into ashes because you could be the next target. Right, Honorable Speaker, one of the things that has actually missed from the minister's statement is the nature of the emergency of the state of the road to Chitezi. I'm even wondering, how did they get there to rescue the people? The road is in such a terrible state that it's an emergency itself. For over seven years, those garbage trucks go throwing garbage, and now they are diverting to pass to Chanja, spreading the methane and all the dirt. Honorable Minister, you respect for the work you've done, but that is one thing you have missed, and you ought to track it. Secondly, I think we all need to be true to ourselves. You pass in the city, KCC now has just had a project where they are putting little bins alongside the road. It's a shame how money can be wasted. The basics of waste management, if it cannot come from KCCA, you wonder who will follow. Nobody. It is very clear, my sister here, Christine, has said it. You should set up a learning example. Put bins that separate garbage in its different categories. But if you can't do that, which other Ugandan will do it in their home? So the question for me, after all the cries, Stezi has been on the red flag. I live along that road for as many years as possible, but you still fail government and make us look bad. So you should be held accountable. And as I conclude, right, Honorable Speaker, I said we should burn this stick right here. Mbarasite now, we are in disarray. The Kenkombe dumping site, the people have chased us, including where we bury people.
So if Kampala that is an attraction of an international level, what will happen to us? Mbarara, Rira, Nakasongora that is yearning to have a city. So I think every coin must be accounted for. For me, I have no kind words for KCCA. We need to see you act. The people have died. We need, right honorable, to come here with an action plan. If we can have Kira Motors in this country produce a bus, why can't we manage our waste? Because, unfortunately, we are no longer going to be killed by natural disasters. No. We are now going to be killed by man-made degrading of our motherland. When Mother Earth cries, it's unstoppable. So I would like to implore you, right honorable, that you save us to come here again. Government should produce an action that translates into a budget. At least we have one plant that can process our waste. And we are losing opportunities for jobs for young people. Thank you very much for the opportunity, right honorable.